Hey, welcome to the next level. I'm Pastor John, Pastor of Grace Fellowship in Batyville, Kentucky. And uh, welcome to our Tuesday Night Live Bible Study. We uh, normally would be uh, continuing right along in the book of Romans. We completed Romans chapter 8 last week. And uh, normally we would just be running directly right into chapter 9. But we're going to take a little bit of a departure from our normal schedule tonight. And uh, we're going to look starting in uh, the book of Isaiah chapter 43. So while you grab your Bible and open it to Isaiah 43, I'm going to open us up in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that you bless your word. You break it open to us, God. Uh, you cause us to feast upon your word tonight. Let it be nourishing, God, to our physical bodies. Let it be nourishing to our spiritual bodies, God. Let it be metabolized by our spirit until it becomes a part of who we are. Just as your word declares in John chapter 1, that the word became flesh. So God, we believe for that tonight, that there will be a lasting change in our lives tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. So open your Bible with me to Isaiah 43. We're going to begin there with verse 1. And it says, But now, thus says the Lord, your Creator, O Jacob, and He who formed you, O Israel. And just immediately I'm reminded of what God uh, began to say to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1. Um, and let's see, we're going to pick up with, uh, just flip over there to Jeremiah chapter 1. We're going to pick up with verse 4. And it says, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, uh, this is Jeremiah speaking, and he's about to share what the word of the Lord that came to him said. And beginning there with verse 5, it says, Before I formed you, in the womb I knew you, and before you were born I consecrated you. Um, I'm going to change over here to the uh, King James Version and read that verse. It says, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. So we have consecrated, we have sanctified, and in... Um, the message translation says, Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations, that's what I had in mind for you. So uh, back to the New American Standard version here. Uh, Before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. And so uh, as you turn back to Isaiah chapter 43... Uh, one thing that I want to point out there just right off of the bat is that uh, you are not a mistake. Uh, your life is not a life that does not have purpose. You have purpose. You have meaning. God has a, a plan for you. He, he caused you to be born with a purpose programmed inside you. Now, if you're trying to figure that out on your own, it's probably never going to happen. You're going to have to surrender to God. You're going to have to yield to the Holy Spirit and submit yourself to God and allow Him to bring that heavenly vision, to bring that divine purpose forth in your life. Uh, it's not going to happen without you and Him working together to that common vision and that common goal. So God knew you before you were formed in the womb. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident. I don't care what anybody has said to you or said about you in your entire life. If it is different from what God says about you, then you can look at it like it's just a lie. It is a, a lying vanity, uh, like what the, the prophet Jonah says in the book of Jonah. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. So listen, I don't want that to be you. I want you to understand that God formed you in the womb before he even formed you. He knew you. He had a plan for you. He had a destiny for you. He still has vision for your life. Even though maybe you don't, God has vision for your life. God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for you. And he wants you to fulfill that destiny. Okay, so that is one of the things that I want you to get out of this Bible study tonight. And there's two things, two things that I want you to get out of this Bible study. That's the first one. The first one is not only are you not a mistake, not, but not only uh, 
Not only does God have a plan and purpose for your life, but he does want you to know what it is, and he wants to help you fulfill that plan and that purpose, and it's something great. It's something fantastic. It is something spectacular. It is something amazing. God doesn't call anybody just to exist. God has called, he's called you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. He has called you to do something great. He has called you to be great. He's called you to manifest greatness. And so that's just how God is. Amen. So, you know, it doesn't mean you have to look at everybody else and say, well, then it has to be better than what he's doing over there or what she's doing over over there. Don't compare yourself with anybody else. God has a special purpose for you. God has a special plan just for you. And whatever it is, it's great. It'll be great for you, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to feel great. It's going to be great. It's going to look great. It's just going to be great. Amen. And so I challenge you tonight to seek God for what his plan and his purpose is for you. Our, our pastor, Pastor Jim, he says this you know, one of the uh, most frequent, most common questions he gets from people is, Pastor, would you pray about what God's purpose is for my life? And I get the I get the gist that he doesn't really like it when he gets that question because he's like, well, in other words, you want me to pray and ask God what his purpose for your life is so that if um, if it doesn't end up happening, then you can blame me. Look, that's not <laughs> that's not what I'm encouraging you to do. I'm encouraging you to seek God. I'm encouraging you to get in, dig in your heels, get in the Word, get on your knees, seek the face of God, uh, fast, pray, whatever you have to do to get God to reveal to you what His purpose and what His plan for your life is and when He shows you what that is. Have your pastor confirm it to you. Uh, have someone that you trust spiritually confirm that to you. And, uh, you know, definitely it's in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. So share that with people of, of, uh, of the Spirit of God uh, that you trust and that you know that hear from God and um, let them help you. Iron sharpens iron. And so let them help you realize what that vision, that plan, and that purpose of God is for your life so that you can step fully into it and see that greatness come forth out of you. Amen. So that's the first thing that I want you to get out of this Bible study tonight. As we go back to Isaiah chapter 43, um, we're going to continue reading here, but I'll start all over again. It's uh, in verse one, it says, but now this says the Lord, your creator, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. And so I want to pause right there for just a moment and uh, just really unwrap and unpack the second thing that I want you to get out of this Bible study tonight. And, and it's going to be really brief tonight. I don't I think I told you that, but uh, we're going to just be really brief. I just want you to get these two things out of this Bible study tonight. One is that there is a plan and a purpose that God has for your life, and He's not hiding it from you. He's hiding it for you. He wants you to seek Him for it so that He can reveal it to you. And then the second thing is that in the culture and the time, the day and the age that we're living in right now, fear is just on the loose. Fear is trying to attach itself to everybody, both the saved and the unsaved, both the redeemed and the unredeemed, the churched and the unchurched. Fear is trying to lay hold on everybody, um, and it's, it's fear of not having enough. It's fear of shortage. It's fear of lack. It's fear of death. It's fear of... Uh, of injury. It's fear of sickness. It's fear in every category that fear can have an effect. Uh, fear is trying to attach itself to people these days. And what is the purpose of fear? Fear, the Bible says in the book of 1 John, fear uh, brings torment. 
fear is to, uh, one of its purposes is to rob you as a believer, to rob you of the faith that Jesus has released to you for you to operate and to manifest the things of God, the promises of God in your life. Fear, if you yield to the spirit of fear, uh, fear will be allowed to stop you from realizing those promises of God in your life. Promises of healing, promises of abundance, promises of, of prosperity, promises of peace, promises of joy, promises uh, promises that God is with you. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Now let's go back to the scripture here in Isaiah chapter 43 because this is what I, I want you to see something here. Uh, he says, I've called you by name. You are mine. Uh, verse 2, he says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they will not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched, nor will the flame burn you. So I want you to see this picture. So right now in our culture, there's so much going on. Um, you know, politically, there's there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on in our culture with regard to identity and uh, and sexuality and uh, I mean all the gender and race, uh, racial things, and uh, all these things are going on at the same time. And fear is using every bit of it to try to grip every person that it can get a hold of and to shape their life uh, and cause them to um, be kept away from God, to keep them from the things of God, to keep them from intimacy with God, to keep them from faith. And so, uh, but I do want you to see here this. He says, when you pass through the waters. So in other words, you might, uh, you might actually experience some things that are unpleasant. You might experience this when you go through the waters, when you go through the rivers, when you go through the fire. Um, you know, and this reminds me of the three Hebrew children in the book of Daniel. You know, they went through the fire. They went through the fire. They went through a, an experience that most people wouldn't have survived. Okay, but they chose the path of not being fearful. They chose the path of maintaining their faith in God. And when that happened, um, what does he say here? He says, I've called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Okay, so you may go through some things. You may experience some things that other people wouldn't be able to take. But you got to know that God is with you. Not only is he with you, he is for you. So you're going to be able to go through things, and I'm not prophesying doom and gloom over you. I'm prophesying victory over you. I'm prophesying that, you know, the things that take people in of the world, that, that takes them out, you're going to walk right through it. You're not going to be harmed by it. You may walk through it, but you will not feel or suffer the consequences of it. You will not fear, feel or suffer the effects of it. You're going to walk through the waters. You're going to go through the rivers. You're not going to be uh, uh, overflowed by it. You're going to walk through the fire and you're not going to be burned by it. What does this tell me? Uh, I'm going to tell you what it tells me. It tells me that God, as long as he is with you, is surrounding you with an anointing of uh, protection. He is surrounding you, and, and I, I want to say it this way, but I'm concerned that I'll lose you when I say this word, but he's surrounding you with an anointing of invincibility. As long as you walk with him, no weapon that's formed against you can prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn because that is your inheritance. You are a, a servant of God and your righteousness is not your own righteousness. It is of God. And that's what God says. Isaiah 54 verse 17. And so God is bringing upon those true believers 
God is bringing upon his church and those who are true believers within his church, his body, he is bringing upon them an anointing of invincibility, an anointing where you can walk through stuff and not feel the effect of it. And you can come out victorious in every situation and every circumstance and nothing by any means shall harm you. Hallelujah. Didn't Jesus say that in the book of Mark chapter 16? Hallelujah. He did. Yes, he did. Amen. Or in, in the book of Luke, <laughs> nothing shall by any means, you'll trample on the serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means harm you. That is an anointing that is coming upon the church right now for these last days. There is an anointing that nothing shall by any means harm you. Listen, so there is no reason to be afraid. So these two things I want you to get, and I'm really speaking prophetically tonight. Uh, I want you to see that you have a purpose. God has a calling on your life to accomplish something great. And because of that, fear will try to take that away from you. Fear will try to rob you of that. But God says, listen, you need to know that he is with you and that even though you walk through some stuff, he has surrounded you with an anointing of his presence that is causing you to be invincible, that you cannot experience any uh, harm from any of it, but you will come out victorious because God is with you and because he is walking with you into that destiny that he has planned for you. Hallelujah. That is so good. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to read to you verse 19. Well, let's, let's go to verse 18, mm -hmm. Isaiah 43, and we'll start to wrap it up right here. But in verse 18, he says, Do not call to mind the former things or ponder the things of the past. That is so important in this time that we're living in. Listen, um, you know, one of the things that we, we tend to want to do is we tend to want to look back at things where we thought we were believing God for something and it never happened. And God is saying, listen, don't, don't call to mind those things, those former things. Don't call to mind those things of the past. Don't ponder on those. Uh, and here's the reason why. And he says in verse 19, he says, Behold, I will do something new. And that's exactly what I'm telling you tonight. God is doing something new. He is causing you to, to step up to a new level. He is causing you to step up into a, a zone of his presence that you are protected, a zone of his presence where you are preserved, a zone of his presence where you are provided for supernaturally, where you don't have to fear anything. You don't have to fear man, which is a snare unto you. You don't have to fear situations. You don't have to fear circumstances. You don't have to fear injury or death. You don't have to fear harm in any way because nothing shall by any means harm you. God is doing a new thing, verse 19. I will do something new now. It will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. So he's answering in verse 19 what he's told you already in verse 18 not to bring to remembrance, not to... Uh, not to ponder on these things of the past where you've, you've believed God or you felt like you were believing God for something and it never happened or it still hasn't come to pass and that's been a hindrance to you or where you, know, you think of something that God has really placed on your heart that you believe that he wants you to have and immediately you think that, wow, that's going to take 10, 15, 20 years don't think like that anymore because God is doing a new thing. Listen to me. And he's answering in verse 19, those things of verse 18. And he says, listen, in times in the past, when it seemed like you were walking through a wilderness, in times in the past, when it seems like your relationship was so dry that you weren't getting anything out of it, he's saying, listen, I am going to take 
those areas of your life that have seemed like a dry, dead wilderness, and I am going to make rivers in, I'm going to make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm going to make a path for you to walk on that is clear. I'm going to make, uh, you know, what, what happens on the roadway? There's signs that tell you where you're going and how far, how far it is to the next thing. And, and there's clear direction. So God is saying, listen, I'm making a roadway in places where you feel like there, you have been all alone. Uh, I'm making a roadway with, with signs that are clear and direction so you know exactly where you are at every given moment. You know exactly what's coming. And in those desert places where it seems like it's been dry and fruitless and barren, I am bringing forth rivers for you. This is just a general description of the new thing that God is doing right now. Now, isn't that awesome? That is amazing. I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, God is doing a new thing. Will you not be aware of it? Will you not be aware of it? God wants you to be aware of it. God wants you to know he's with you. He wants you to know he's got a plan for you. And he wants to work with you to bring it to pass in your life. Don't think about the past. Don't think about everything that didn't work. Don't think about everything that never came to pass or everything that you know you tried and failed and it didn't work out. Don't think about those things. Think about what God is doing right now. He's saying, listen, I am right now doing a new thing. I'm making a roadway for you through the wilderness to bring you out of there. And I'm making rivers in the desert. You know what happens when you put a river in the desert? It's not a desert anymore. He's bringing a transformation of desert, dry, dead desert places in your life. He is bringing a transformation to where it is a place that produces life and abundance and fruit fruitfulness through that connection and through that relationship with him let me pray for you father in the name of jesus lord i thank you so much for what you're doing right now god i pray for my brother and i pray for my sister right now in the name of jesus that they would experience this that they would grab a hold of this, that they would latch a hold of it and not let go and that they would experience every bit of this new thing that you are doing, God, that they're protected, they're provided for supernaturally, that they will walk in the calling and in the destiny that you have for them. They will fulfill the purpose that you have for their life. I thank you for it, God. They are invincible in the name of Jesus. I give you thanks and praise for it. Nothing shall by any means harm them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, um, come and be part of our services Sunday morning at 1030 and at Grace Fellowship in Batable, Kentucky. We've got a guest speaker this, this Sunday, and uh, she's going to wow you. She's on fire for God. And what happens when you get close to somebody who's on fire for God? That fire will spread to you. So come and, come and be a part of what God's doing there. And you will not regret it. I promise you God will bless you. And, and you'll go to the next level. That's, that's, what, that's what I believe. That's what I'm expecting. Amen. So come be part of our services this Sunday morning at 1030 Grace Fellowship in Beattyville, Kentucky. And here I want to leave you with uh, this. We've, um, we've opened up a new digital store. Got a lot of products out there that'll be, uh, that'll be a blessing to you. So uh, check that out. And uh, we'll show you a, a few of those here as we close. But until I see you again, you be blessed and welcome to the next level.